Hi, uh, for those who are watching today, uh, maybe you are students from uh, SMK King George V. So today uh, I'm going to do a, a short presentation about your final year exam for English language. Okay, for this year, for your Form 4, uh, because you are using the new uh, textbook, which is the CEFR, uh, which is aligned to the new uh, syllabus. So you are going to be using uh, or be sitting for the new format for uh, Form 4 and also Form 5 next year. So uh, the format will cover four papers, paper one, paper two, paper three, paper four. Okay, it is a bit similar like your PT3 exam, uh, which you set for last year. Uh, so uh, I'm going to discuss today will be writing. So there are two papers for your final this year, final year exam, it will be reading and writing. So reading now is paper one, because if you follow the old syllabus, paper one is writing, but now it is reading. But the code is still the same, it's triple one nine, stroke one and triple one nine, stroke two. So now I'll be sharing my screen for the presentation. Okay, I hope that uh, if you have any question, you can ask in the live chat, but actually I'm controlling everything. So sometimes I cannot see the comments. Okay, now I'm going to present my screen. Okay, hopefully you can see all this. These are the some of the format for the SPM exam uh, in 2021. So if you can see this paper, I'll share this. The slide. Okay, there is paper one, triple one, nine stroke one, paper two, triple one, nine stroke two, paper three, triple one, nine stroke three, and paper four, triple one, nine stroke four. So paper one is reading, paper two is writing, paper three is speaking, and paper four is listening. So let's do a, a bit of a, a briefing on your paper one, which is reading. Actually, it is quite easy because if you can see here, it is more on uh, multiple choice questions. So you have A, B, C, and then you have another one where you have to uh, read and then answer, and the choices will be for A, B, C, D. And the rest will be like uh, no transfer of information when you put in the short answers like words or phrases. And then there is one part where you do the matching. So this is quite easy. And the total mark for paper one reading is 40. And then for your paper two, a writing will be 60. So together, this one will be 100. And then for next year, there'll be paper three, which is for your speaking. It is 24 marks and I have to remind you that for speaking next year, there will be two teachers. One is called the interlocutor who will be a teacher from our school. But another one who is called the assessor will be appointed by the Ministry of Education. So it is a different teacher or a teacher who is not teaching in our school. So 24 marks. The next one we have paper four. Before four is listening. So for listening, uh, 30 marks. So there are a few sections where you have to choose also multiple choice answers. You have A, B, C, D, and you have also structured uh, questions. Okay, now I'm gonna move out from here so that we can see the writing. Okay. So I'll show you a bit of your reading, which uh, will be coming out in the end of the year exam. So this is a question given by the Ministry of Education. So you have part one. So these are the questions. You're going to read maybe advertisement, poster, and so on. Okay. So you have to choose 
there are three choices a b or c so there'll be eight questions let's move on to the next page so again okay read an advertisement or poster and then you have to answer with three options a b or c choose the correct one okay then number five and number six there could be a dialogue also a conversation and then the next one you also have uh, another poster or newspaper uh, report so there are eight questions let me go to part two part two is you're going to read a text it's about the pangolin so you have uh, blanks here so you have to put in the correct answer so the answers are on the next page so you can see here 9 10 and until 18 so there are four options a b c and d okay for part three is a reading comprehension is a bit long so for this reading comprehension uh, you have to read the whole text and then there are objective questions also so 19 20 until 26 so there are four choices a b c or d i feel that uh, reading paper is now uh, with the new format it is easier compared to the old format okay now you have part four question 27 to 32 so this is also a, a passage but there are blanks so these blanks like 27 28 29 30 31 and 32 they are missing sentences so there are the sentences here a b c d e f g and h so when you answer you're supposed to put only the alphabet or the letter a b c and so on okay so let's continue we have part five part five uh question 33 to 40 so this is uh six students Okay, so these are part of the uh, interview. So these are the uh, statements given by each student. For example, A, Shah, B, Julie, C, Hocklin. So these are the comments or the reports or the interview done by uh, them. So they are A to F. So after you finish reading, you have to answer the statement okay let me check again okay so after this there will be the questions okay you see the statement here i did not enjoy the work initially i organized my work by myself so you need to find where are the answers okay which are the paragraph is it a b c d or f and the last question 37 to 40 so you have to complete it's quite simple because there are only one two three four four blanks where you have to write your own answer and remember you can only write choose no more than one word so you can only write one word in the blanks okay so how do you think is the uh, question for reading i think it's quite easy right okay let's move on we are going to look at the next one, which is uh, writing. So this is very important because uh, the writing uh, paper, which is paper two, I feel it is a bit strict. And then if you don't answer uh, the question or the task, you won't get uh, high marks. So let's look at the question. Part one, you must answer this question. Part one, you must answer all the parts. Part one, part two, and part three. Uh, the marks are all the same, which uh, is 20 marks. Okay, so for part one, part one, uh, you are given uh, an email to write. So this is a fixed format, okay? So you have to write an email. So you must remember the format. And let's go to number two first. Part two. It is just an essay. They will just give you the word write an essay. So uh, you can just write a normal paragraphing, like paragraph one is the introduction, paragraph two is the content, and the last paragraph is the closing. Okay, let's look at part three. Part three is a bit different. They are they're going to give you choices. So there will be three different format for writing or genre. Genre is a type. So the four type which are compulsory are article review report 
and story. So uh, when you go to form 5, you must remember all this format for writing, which is for part 3. Okay, let's go to back to part 1. For part 1, uh, it is uh, a short essay. So you have to write in about 80 words. Okay, so this is the question paper. Let's go through the question now. Question 1. You receive an email from your new friend Amy who has just moved to your hometown. So you must remember or circle or highlight Amy is a new friend and Amy just moved to your hometown. So this is a, an email from Amy. Hi, the school holiday is finally here. Let's go for a picnic with our friends. Where shall we go and what can we do there? What should we bring? I'll be waiting for your reply. Bye. Now, write an email to your friend in about 80 words. Write your answer below. Okay, so when you have this question or the email from Amy, look at the WH questions. So remember, you have to answer all the WH questions because if you do not, then you won't get good marks because we are going to follow a certain band for marking. Okay, let's look at the first one. Where you're going for a picnic. Okay, it's a school holiday. And then where shall we go? So you have to give a place. And what can we do there? So you have to give the activities. And then lastly, what should we bring? So you have to give suggestions of maybe food, drinks, and mat, or maybe a ball or an umbrella. Okay, so remember, now let's go to the format. Remember, when you write email, you must have at, for example, like my name. Okay, I can have a gun at or gun123 at gmail.com or gun at yahoo.com. And the subject, you can write uh, a picnic, okay, or a school holiday picnic is up to you. And then when you start, remember that you have to say hi. So the moment that you start, you have to say hi. Okay, I'll go, I'll check another answer. Let's see whether I have an answer here. Okay. Okay, I have the answer here. So this is better. So this is an email. Okay, let's look at the question again. So new friend, uh, Amy, she has just moved to your hometown. It's a school holiday. Then you are going out for a picnic. Okay. So where to go, what to do and what to bring. Okay, let's get this one. So where to? You can like the Lima Park. You're going to a park. What to do? You can play games. You can chat. You can get to know each other. And then you can do other things. Okay, what to bring? You can bring food, drinks, mat, umbrella, ball and others. Okay, remember to score in the writing paper, you have to write the connectors and the linkers. Okay, uh, if you use simple uh, connectors like for, and, but, no, yet, so uh, this will give you only about uh, three marks for language. You need to write better connectors or linkers such as furthermore, although, in addition, moreover, or besides. And then uh, it is advisable for you to add uh, maybe an idiom or proverb. So in this case, or in this scenario, or because we are going for a picnic, you can write, have a blast, have a wheel of a time, barrel of laughs, okay? So remember, you must also use the correct tense because uh, you have not gone for the picnic. So remember, you cannot use past tense, okay? You can use present or future tense. Okay, let's look at the example. Model answer. To amy123 at gmail.com, subject, picnic at the Lima Park. Hi, Amy. It's a fantastic idea to go for a picnic during the school holiday. Since you are new in town, I'm certain you have not explored every nook and cranny of this great town. So nook and cranny means all the places in the town. Because she's new, she has not gone to all the places. So this is good. You can write this so uh, to get more marks. A great place for a picnic is definitely the Lima Park. So you have named the park. It is situated near the lake. Why don't we go this Saturday? I'll also invite some of our classmates to join us. 
This is an opportunity for you to get to know them better. I'll ask Raju. He's such a barrel of laughs. So he's a joker, okay? So you can see here, uh, there are already activities. You can get to know each other better. So let's look at the things that you're going to bring. So remember the phrases in blue, like I also, in addition, then, if, these are the connectors and the linkers. In addition, we need to bring some food and drinks. My mom can bake her famous chocolate cake for us too. It's a great idea to bring a ball that we can kick around. Then, if it is a windy day, we can buy some kites too. Kite flying is popular and fun activity in the park. You'll be surprised to see kites of various colors and shapes So at the store there. I'm certain that we'll have a blast. Bye. So you can see here, right? For the first part, the email should be very simple, but you have to use uh, all the good words. And then you must make sure that you answer all the questions. Okay, what to do, what to bring, okay, all the food and so on. Yeah. So uh, I think you can score in the first uh, writing uh, section because it is quite easy. Okay, the marks 20. So we're going to move on. Okay, part two. Part two is an essay. So let's look at the question. You must answer this question. You must write in 125 to 150 words. So this is the new format. Okay. Uh, for this one, it is more like a free essay, free writing where you just write your essay. So let's look at the question. And then remember, all the bullets here, what, reasons, and where, you must answer them. Okay, if you miss one, you'll get uh, lesser marks. Your class has been discussing how they spend their money and your teacher has asked you to write an essay about what you would spend your money on. In your essay, you should write about what you would like to buy. Okay, what are the things you're going to buy? So it means that uh, what you would spend your money on. So you have money, so what are you going to buy? Okay, reasons for your choice. And then where do you usually buy these things? So you can buy maybe one thing or more. Okay, write your essay using all the notes and giving reasons for your point of view. Point of view means from your opinion. Okay, let's look at the question again. I'll give you time to study the question. And then normally you can underline or write at the side there or use a highlighter to highlight the important uh, information or the important uh, words or phrases. Okay, can you understand? So let's move on. How do you spend your money? So what would you buy? So here you have a few. Uh, these are ideas. So you can say that uh, you have pocket money. Okay, uh, you use the pocket money for daily, uh, daily stuff like food and drinks during recess and then you save the rest. And then what do you do with the rest? You spend it on workbooks, reference books, on novels, or stationery. Okay, reason for choosing all this. For example, you are choosing books, workbooks, reference book, novel. So okay. reason. Uh, you use the pocket money for daily. Uh, the reason daily is like food and drinks during recess, and then you save the rest. Improve. And then, what do you do with the rest? You spend it on workbooks, reference book. Okay, a uh, reason for the choice to improve academic performances to score better marks or grades, and then do not go to, because you do not go to tuition classes. So remember, the second part is not that easy because you have to give good reasons, okay? Where do you usually buy these things? So you can write in several bookshops in town. Uh, you are going to choose the one that offer discount for members. Okay, again, remember, you have to use connectors and linkers. Uh, for example, Four. Okay, let's look at this one. If you forget this, these are the simple ones. For simple one, uh, if language, you get only three marks. For, you can look at this one. You can remember fanboys. So F fan, A F four, A fan, N, 
and no. So fan, F A N. Boy, boy, B is but, or yet, and so. So it becomes F A N B O Y S. So fan boys. So these are considered are considered the simple linkers. Okay. Uh, better uh, connectors are furthermore, although in addition, moreover, besides. Um, Consequently, subsequently, there are many more, okay? So, you can uh, sort of learn all these connectors and linkers and then jot down somewhere in your notebook. Okay, and for the word besides, remember, besides, do not write besides that, okay? That is more like Manglish because it's uh, from the translation of a slide daripada itu. So, you have besides that. That is for itu. Actually, there's no that, okay? Just write besides. And then idioms. Since we are saving money and then using money only for important things, you can say, save for a rainy day. So that can be your idiom or proverb or saying. Okay, let's look at the example. So you can see here there is no, uh, how to say it, uh, like strict format. Okay, there is no strict format here. You can see only one paragraph, second paragraph and the third paragraph. So remember Whatever you write, you must have three paragraphs because the first is the introduction, the second is the content, and the third is the conclusion. You can expand the content. So if you expand the content, maybe you have one paragraph for intro, two paragraphs for contents, and last paragraph is for conclusion. Okay? So example, as a student, I get pocket money daily from my parents. They usually give me RM, 10 ringgit or uh, 10 ringgit to spend on food and drinks during recess in school. Occasionally, okay, this is like a connector. Occasionally, uh, connector for frequency, okay, like uh, always, seldom, never. Okay, occasionally, my mother makes sandwiches or fried rice for me. Whatever is left of the money is kept in a piggy bank in my room, safely tucked away from my younger brother's eyesight. In addition, during special occasions like my birthday or Hari Raya, I'll receive some money from my parents, grandparents, and other relatives. So you can see here, the most important thing is remember that you need to control your tenses. Okay? So this is how you, you are going to spend. So you have to use present or future tense. Okay, let's look at the second paragraph. I often spend my money on workbooks and reference books which are necessary for me as I do not attend any tuition classes. Once in the blue moon, I treat my younger brother by buying him a toy. Since my target is to get better grades in the coming examinations, I prefer buying books for subject, subjects which I need to improve on, like chemistry, biology, and additional mathematics. My favorite place to buy these books is a shop that belongs to my friend's uncle. This is because he gives me extra discounts. Okay, you can see that whatever you write, you have to answer the questions. Okay, I repeat, I'll show you the earlier slide. Okay, remember this question? The bullets, what you would like to buy. Reasons for your choice. Where do you usually buy these things? So remember, for SPM next year and for your Form 4 final year exam, you have to follow this strictly, okay? Because the marking scheme is quite, quite, quite strict too for you to score if you miss any of the tasks. Okay, so let's go back to the last uh, conclusion. Furthermore, I'm thankful to my parents who have instilled in me the importance of saving money for a rainy day. Hence, I do not buy things on impulse. New mobile phone? Well, I got mine by doing extra chores for my parents during weekends. I also run errands for my neighbours. Every month, I will collect old newspapers from the houses and send them to a recycling centre nearby. So it is, uh, you can see that uh, actually the first essay uh, is a bit easier because it is targeted for the weaker students. So if they are weaker in English, they can answer the first question. But as you move on to part two and part three, you must be very good uh, in your English, okay? So this is the second part. Remember, it's about 150 words. Okay, the last one, part three. Remember, there are four different 
types of writing. Okay, how to remember this? Maybe you can say R A R S, RAS, okay, or R A R S, okay, like article, report, review, story. All these are the four options that will come out in SPM next year. And also, we are following this for the end of the year exam. Okay, for part three, um, there are only three options. So maybe this year, article will come out, report will come out, and story. So review is not there. Okay, if you look at review, this is not something new. When you uh, were in Form 1, this uh, is in your Pass 2 textbook. Okay, it is in Unit 2 where they give you a paragraph, uh, a passage about uh, a visit to Sherlock Holmes Museum. So that is the review. And in Form 3, there is another review. Form 3 is close-up textbook. It is also Unit 2 where you give a review about uh, Gino's restaurant. Okay. So it is part of your uh, textbook. So if you want to know what's going to come out, what format, you can refer to your textbook in Form 4. It is full plus. Yeah. So let's look at the question. Uh, question 3, question 4, question 5. Okay, the question is, uh, the instruction is, write an answer to one of the questions. 3, 4, 5 in this part. Write your answer. How long is it? In 200 to 250 words in an appropriate style. Style means the format, okay? On this question paper, put the question number in the box at the top of the answer space. So you need to indicate, am I, are you answering question three, four, or five? So there is a box there for you. Okay, mind you, this is the actual SPM paper for next year. This is an example, okay? So for question three, you see this notice on the board outside the school library. Okay, so this is the notice. Articles wanted, my school canteen. What other types of food would you like to be served? So at the canteen, what type of food do you want? Okay, so remember food, you don't put S, you put more for type, types of food. Okay, you don't put F-O-O-D-S. Okay, next, what special facilities should your canteen have? So. What do you want in your canteen? Okay, uh, air conditioner and so on. Okay, how can you improve your canteen? Okay, what what can you do or what can the prefects do or what can the school do? Okay, so write us an article answering these questions. The best article will be displayed on the school magazine. It's not on. It's in the school magazine. Okay, so remember, article has a certain format that we are going to see later. Okay, question four. You recently saw this notice in a magazine. Review required. Review, okay, so you know it's a review. Have you watched an interesting movie? Any interesting movies lately? Send us your movie review. Say what you enjoyed about the movie. Would you recommend the movie to your friends? Why? Okay, the best reviews will be published in our newsletter. So it is a newsletter. Newsletter is like, uh, the thinner form of your school magazine, okay? Write your review. Okay, last question, question five. Your teacher has asked you to write a story for a school magazine. So this is a story. Story is narration, okay? The story must have the title, A Dream Comes True. Your story should include a description of the dream. So be careful with dream, okay? Dream can be a wish. It's not really like you're asleep and you're dreaming, okay? How the dream is achieved. So when you see how the dream is achieved, you know that this is not like sleeping and dreaming. It's more like a wish or an ambition. So write your story. So question three, four, or five. You have to decide which one are you going to write. Okay? So you can see here that uh, part three is a bit uh, tougher than the others. Okay, but remind you, uh, from five this year, they have to write longer essay because it is about 350 words and they have four options. Now you have three options and then you have to write in about 250 words. Uh, what's the difference between the old format and the new format? Uh, and the, there are only two parts for the old format. For in the old format, there are notes given, but the second part, uh, there are just questions. So here you have uh, more guided uh, questions where they give you the what, how, who, and so on, okay? So I'll give you time to look at uh, through this. Okay, this is part one. I'm uh, sorry, part three for article.
okay just go through the question slowly and make sure you know the question and then the next one we are going to look at the example of the answers okay so article make sure you have a title you can write my school canteen or other titles okay what type of other food you want in the canteen so you can say maybe i want fresh fruits i want healthier snacks instead of junk food okay what about the special facilities okay you want trays instead of polystyrene uh, container to reduce plastic usage or to reduce waste and then you want some equipment to catch all the flies at your canteen or you want food covers you want a vending machine or the vending machine is not supposed to be there okay so it's up to you to say what you want or what you do not want okay then ways you can improve the canteen so you may, maybe you say that you need to queue up no cutting queues pushing and shoving and then leftover food uh, must be discarded in proper bins and then all the students can bring their own containers and cutlery okay uh, if you really study the questions you will realize that okay let's look at the question again there are no given notes so that's this is a big problem for the average or weaker students so that's why you need to read more to improve your um, knowledge and also to improve your vocabulary so maybe sometimes you have something in your mind but you can't really express it in english okay so again connectors and linkers are important and then idioms maybe you want it to be uh, speak and span it's not spin eh? it's speak and span so clean or you can say that uh, it's better to have a clean canteen because you uh, you think that prevention is better than cure. So it's up to you to come up with the idioms, proverbs or saying. That's why to do very well next year in SPM, you have to read more and memorize some idioms or proverbs. Okay, this is an example. My school canteen by Robert Han. Okay, remember the format. Article for format, you must have title and then buy because it's going to be okay let's look at the question again it's going to be in the school magazine so you have to write title my school canteen and buy the writer robert han example so as usual we have three paragraphs remember uh, if you are good in your english uh, you can write longer uh, essays okay but remember you have to be very careful with your grammar mistakes, spelling mistakes, because this will uh, somehow affect your marks. Okay. So let's look at the first paragraph. The school canteen serves students and members of the staff with light refreshment in hygienic condition. The food should be cooked under strict supervision. Every effort should be made to ensure that students get the best food at the cheapest rate. I suggest that more fresh fruits like bananas, oranges, and dry fruits should also be sold instead of junk food. Junk food or fast food such as burgers, fries, donuts. Okay, look at the spelling of donut. Okay, that is like more of American spelling. Okay, so be careful. We are using CEFR, -E so that is more like uh, inclined to uh, Cambridge English. So you have to write the correct spelling. Donut, cakes, cookies, chocolates, and savouries are not good for our health. Junk food contains harmful additive and coloring. Get the coloring as well. So these are some of the wrong spelling. Thus, school canteen should not stock this food. Instead, canteen operators should be allowed only to sell rice, noodles, pasta, bread, fresh salad, and other raw vegetables, as well as fruits and juices. Okay, the link between eating nutritious food and performance in examination has been well established. Junk food only makes a student lethargic. Uh, lethargic. lethargic means, means uh, you are anxious, you cannot sit still, okay, as he or she is deprived of essential vitamins. Okay, so when you are uh, feeling nervous, you cannot concentrate, so there is a problem or maybe taking too much junk food. Although the food is always fresh and clean, it is served in disposable containers such which contributes to more pollution. The plastic bags or polystyrene containers are non-biodegradable, which means they could remain on earth for hundreds of years, contaminating the soil and sea. 
This, this container should be replaced with trays that are washed daily. In addition, the usage of plastic straw should be banned as students must be encouraged. Okay, this is a wrong spelling. Must be encouraged. So there's a D there. Okay, must be taken, must be eaten. So must be encouraged. D there, okay? To bring their own spoon, fork, as well as straw, uh, steel straws. So uh, as I, I was reading this, do you realize that there are a lot of difficult vocabularies? So if you know that there are many difficult words that you need to learn or memorize, or these are words that you have not heard of before, so it is high time that you improve now. Because when I went for the meeting, they say you have one year to train the students, okay? So you need to improve by reading more, buying uh, English newspapers or reading a few articles on the internet and so on, okay? And remember, next year, we're going to make it compulsory for students to buy model essay books, okay? And that is also good to have a dictionary with you, okay? Next. There are some more here. The school also, uh, actually, just now there were three paragraphs, right? One, two, three. Okay, the next, we have four and five and six, okay? The school also should re remove the vending machines which sell soft drinks. Soft drinks are spiked with sugar and have no nutritional content. The main ingredients of these carbonated drinks, okay, wrong spelling for drinks, are water, sugar, and coloring, which are harmful to us over the long term. Excessive sugar consumption contributes to diabetes, which is life-threatening. Those who consume too much sugar too are at risk of becoming obese, which can lead to medical complications. Thus, schools should not allow the presence of vending machines that stop health uh, that stop healthy drinks such as, okay, schools should only allow the presence of vending machines that stop healthy drinks such as soybean drinks, yogurt drinks, herbal teas and others. The latter has low sugar content, okay? The latter means the last one. The last one is the herbal tea. So it has low sugar content but rich in protein and carbohydrate. So you should, the vending machine should not be uh, stocked with uh, like Coca-Cola, Coke, Sprite, and so on, okay? So during interval, there is a great rush, but some boys do not behave themselves, and the service becomes a problem. So this is about what you can do. Let's look at the question again. See the last one? How can you improve your canteen, okay? So uh, during the interval, there is a great rush for some boys to not... Uh, for, uh, sorry, during the interval, there is a great rush, but some boys do not behave themselves and the service becomes a problem. As a prefect, I should work out a better system for supervising pupils with the other prefects on duty to maintain good discipline amongst the students. Okay, lastly, this is the conclusion. Students stay in school almost every day for five or six hours continuously with little break during the time. Hence, to have something to fill the hungry stomach in between is not a luxury but a necessity. Can you see that? That this student is able to write quite well, okay? She or he has the vocabulary. Okay, then we go to the next question, question four. You recently saw this notice in a magazine. Reviews required. Have you watched? See the word, have you watched? So the moment you see this, you know that you have already watched the movie. So after watching, only then you can write a review. You can't write a review before you watch, right? Okay, send us your movie review. Say what you enjoy. So when you say send us your movie review, you're going to write about the movie. Say what you enjoy about the movie, okay? Please remember, you cannot write the, the movie, the story, the storyline itself, okay? Because if you write that, then you are not writing a review, okay? You can write a short summary uh, about what, uh, what, what, what is happening or what happened in the movie, okay? But you must concentrate on what you enjoyed about the movie or what you didn't enjoy. Okay, then would you recommend the movie to your friends? Why? So the best review will be published in our newsletter. Okay, write your review. Okay, let's look at the example. Okay, um... Notes is a movie review, what you watch. So name of the movie must be there. Okay, then I repeat, simple summary of the storyline. Okay, don't write the whole story. And then you end up with three pages of essay. 
why you enjoy it? Okay, because it's full of action, there are great actors, or there are scenic locations. Would you recommend it? Yes. Not a dull moment because it's not dull, it's very interesting. Always on the edge of your seat, it means you're eager to, or you are you love the story because it's very exciting, and then you are not sleepy or you didn't fall asleep. Okay, again, remember you have to write the connectors and the linkers, and then find a suitable idiom or proverb. Okay, next. Let's look at the model answer. So you can write, remember, review is also similar with article. Okay. Okay, let's look at article again. Okay, so the title, My School Canteen by Robert Hunt. So if you ask me, teacher, should I underline? Uh, it's okay if you do not underline the title, My School Canteen. Okay, let's look at the review. You can write a film review. And then colon is here, then write the title Avatar by Anita Lee. Okay, if you do not want to write a film review, you can just write the name of the film or the movie Avatar, then it's okay, or Avengers. Okay, so one, two, three, three paragraphs. Okay, there are many more, four, five, six. Okay, there are six paragraphs altogether. So you can see here that students or candidates are writing longer and longer. Okay, I repeat. First essay, 80 words. Second essay, 150 words. And the last essay, you must write 250 words. Okay, let's look at the model answer. The film Avatar is directed by James Cameron. It stars Sam Warrington, Zoe Saldana, Stephen Lang and Sigourney Weaver. The cinematography is in the hand of Mauro Fiore and Joe Lettery handling the special effects and music by James Homer. This action film runs for 2 hours and 43 minutes. Okay, you can see here, there are a lot of difficult vocabulary, like cinematography, okay, special effects. So you must really improve your English. Okay, so paragraph 2. The film tells the story of a paraplegic marine, Jack Sully, played by actor Sam Warrington. After Jack's twin brother died, died, okay, not dies, huh? died, yeah? or you can say dies also. But if you ask me, the if you start with the film tells, so you must write in present tense, okay? So after Jake's twin brother dies, he is asked. So you see here, he is. So this is also present tense. He is asked at the last minute to go to a new planet called Pandora in his brother's place. So Jack is sent. Uh, sorry, Jake is sent, not Jake was sent, okay? Jake is sent on a special mission along with his new virtual avatar body so that he looks like the native. Okay, remember, in the exam, you cannot write with brackets. You must use commas, okay? To integrate himself with them and gain their trust. So this is a paragraph two. It's uh, like a summary of the film or the movie. Then we go to paragraph three. Avatar has received attention because it is the first film to be released in 3D. The 3D effects were smooth and mesmerizing. Okay, let's look at the effect. Were smooth. See the word were? So now you are uh, writing in past tense. Okay, then remember mesmerizing, you cannot use Z or Z, you must use S. They made, see, meet. Okay, not make. So they made the film come to life, not file, okay, film come to life with the feeling that the breathtaking scenery was directly in front of you and that you were there with the characters and among the landscape. Okay, so now you are talking about your experiences at the movie. So you must use past tense. Okay, Avatar truly marks the coming of age of 3D cinema with pure technology, special effects, beautiful finesse, uh, Aesthetic shock, fearfulness, and eye for details. See, all the difficult words are here. Okay, finesse, aesthetic, and shock, fearful, eye for details. So these are difficult words. Only good students can use this type of words. The director's vision inside Pandora is a pure art that is made more beautiful with the tall and wide-eyed people, lush greenery, and the postmodern creatures. So you have all the difficult words here. 
But it's, it's simple, straightforward narration. The movie's evergreen romance between a human and an alien blended beautifully with a strong anti-war statement. Even Avatar is simplicity and heart. Okay? So you see the word is simplicity and heart. So these are all good words. So this student definitely will get very high marks. Director and screenwriter James Cameron has no doubt created, okay, this is the recommendation, okay, or your, your plus point about the movie. He has no doubt created a burly and visually thrilling appeal to save the world before it is too late. Cinematography by Maury Fiore is excellent and special effects by Fort Lettery are truly mind-blowing. Okay, so these are the, all the adjectives, okay, the praises or the positive points. Music given by James uh, E. Pierre goes off smoothly with the flow of the movie. Both Zoe Saldana and Sam Warrington perform their roles excellently and have shaped up the warm love story of the Navy woman and the blue-skinned human avatar perfectly. I enjoyed the movie for its uniqueness. Okay, you can see that. That is the, your feeling. Okay? Its storyline of survival set against power and violence. I will rate it ten, uh, 8 upon 10. If you like futuristic films with a dash of incredulity plus romance and 3D magic, Avatar is for you. Okay, so this is, uh, I took this uh, a bit uh, from uh, a website called WW English Daily 626. So there are a lot of, a lot of essays there, okay. So this is an example of a good essay that you can write. So if you can write this, uh, maybe you can score maybe a uh, 19 out of 20. Okay, uh, again, let me remind you, part A, the short essay, 20 marks, and the second essay, also 20 marks, and the longest essay is also 20 marks. So total 60 marks. Okay, the last question. Uh, question five, your teacher has asked you to write a story for a school magazine. The story must have title, A Dream Comes True. Your story should include a description of the dream, how the dream is achieved. Remember, you have to write all this, okay? So, so far, which one do you think is the easiest to answer? Is it the first one about uh, an article, second one review, or the third one is a story? If you ask me, I always prefer a story. Even now in Form 5, I advise students to write more on descriptions and narration because it's easier for you to uh, memorize some of the good sentences and phrases. If you go for factual essays, uh, it's difficult for you to spot which question will come up in the exam. Okay, so let's go on. Model as answer story, dreams or uh, dream come tr uh, comes true. Okay, only one dream. Okay, what dream? You have to describe the dream. For example, your ambition to be a pilot or you have dream uh, to be a fireman. Okay, how dream is achieved. So how do you achieve the dream? Maybe by working hard uh, to score good grades and then you receive a scholarship to study abroad and then you graduated after four years. So, okay, how did the dream come true? So remember again, connectors and linkers must be in your essays, okay? And then you must write idioms and proverbs such as uh, on top of the world, on cloud nine, not cloud nine, nah, cloud nine and in seven heaven. This is to show happiness, okay? So this is a long model answer, see? Okay, you have paragraph one, two, three, paragraph four, five, six. There are six paragraphs, okay? So that is the length. Okay, let's go uh, to the model answer. We have dreams practically every night. Some of these dreams are remembered vividly. Vividly means clearly. Other dreams, however, are forgotten as soon as we wake up. I often dream about flying. When I wake up, so uh, you can write in present tense because this is about your dream. When I wake up, the sensation of being high up in the air remains with me and this makes me learn more about aircraft. I become more and more interested and I believe soon I will have to disappoint my parents. So the student end with the sentence suspense. Why you have to disappoint your parents? Okay, so we are eager to read the second paragraph. My parents told me several times that they would like me to take up architecture, but I know that my aptitude is different. My mother was very frightened when I told her of my dream. 
She mentioned all the air crashes she had read about and told me that it is a hazardous occupation. My father is not concerned about the hazards and it seems he wants to realize in me an ambition which he had nursed in his youth. Okay, maybe the father wanted to be a pilot when he was young. My friends seem to think that being a pilot is as good a job as any other, but they wonder if I am suited for it. Some of my friends think that I am not interested in the idea of being a pilot and have warned me against deceiving myself. So you can see all the big words or difficult words are uh, here. Okay, so this is a good student. I should think that this idea developed in me when, or at the age of nine, my father took me for a joy ride on a sinner. I still remember his name, the Skyhawk. I watched what the pilot did from the time of takeoff until landing. I then imagine, so this is a past tense, okay? Because in past tense, because you're telling a story that happened, okay? I then imagine myself strapped in the cockpit, handling the controls. When an air show was held, I went every day of the week to see the demonstration. It was this air show, I believe, that made me more determined. I am a member of the Air Training Corps. One of my hobbies is building model aircraft, and I have more than a dozen plastic models suspended from the ceiling of my room. I also make aircraft models with balsa wood and paper and spend hours flying them in the open field near to my house. Okay, it's like youngsters nowadays, okay, where you uh, fly the drones and so on. Eh? So, do you think you can write like this? Uh, if you feel that, no, uh, maybe, or no, I'm not, I'm not confident in writing, so you better improve yourself because, like they say, you still have one year, okay, until the end of next year. Okay, let's continue. I feel that I have the necessary qualities to become a pilot. My little mathematic ability should enable me to study the theoretical part of the pilot's course. I am in the science stream and the physics subject I learned at school will be an advantage. My vision is 6'6 and I'm above the average in height. My school has developed in me a sense of responsibility and I am safety conscious. Okay, so you see all the big words are here again. Okay? I dream to be a commercial pilot handling passenger aircraft. Being a commercial pilot has several material advantages. Commercial pilots are very highly paid and are also given many fringe benefits. They can travel to all the cities that the airline serve. If they get tired of one circuit, they can skip to another and visit all the countries in the new itinerary. When out of the country, they are given excellent accommodation and other benefits. Okay, so this is about being a commercial pilot. As other boys of my age, I have also a dream. The, real, the realization of it may not be possible. None of, nonetheless, okay, look at the word nonetheless. So these are all the connectors and the linkers. I have at least the satisfaction of having a goal before me and the desire to reach it will give me sufficient motivation. I now work harder at scoring better grades for most of my subjects, as I aim to get that scholarship, which will get me to a college and graduate with a bachelor's degree in aeronautical engineering. Wow, that's nice, right? So these are the good essays that are for good students. Okay, can you see that the progress? Because students, they may be able to answer part one. Better students, they can answer part, part two, but only those who are really good in their English can write part three. Okay, so that's all. Uh, let me remind you that although the marks are different for paper one, paper two, paper three, and paper four, paper one reading 40 marks, paper two 60, and then you have your uh, speaking 24 marks and also your uh, listening, uh, okay, 20 marks. So all this, uh, each paper still weighs 25%, okay? Whether it's 20 marks, you still have to convert it to 25%. Okay, so if you look at all the marks, you know that the most mark, uh, uh, how to say it, the weightage, okay, the weightage is more on writing, right? Because it's 60 marks. Okay, so that's why uh, you have to 
test yourself in this final year exam. See whether you're able to do. And I'm very certain because I've given um, a briefing to all your English teachers. So they also have this format. And then you try to challenge or test yourself whether you can write all these three essays. And then let's see what you get on the score that you will get at the end of this year. Okay, that's all. Thank you for attending today. There are five or six of you. Thanks for watching. Uh, actually, I wanted to do Google Meet, but for Google Meet, you I have to uh, allow you to enter because sometimes if you have different email, you cannot come in and so on, okay? Actually, we, uh, we wanted to do this so that uh, some students do not miss uh, because some of you are not in school. Maybe when your teacher is teaching or explaining this format, you are not there, so you will miss all this information and you will write the wrong thing in the exam. Okay, that's all. Thank you. Okay, bye-bye and thank you again for coming today. So I'm going to uh, stop sharing and then I can go to YouTube. Okay, just wait for a while. Okay, I'm back here. <laughs> okay, now I can see the comment because normally we, we take two or three to control this. Okay, I can see Kashmini. I can see Daphne. Okay, thanks for coming. Thank you. So, are you taking uh, English tuition? So, if you are, hopefully your teacher will be you know, using the new format next year. Okay, that's all. Bye bye. Thank you again and study hard for your final year exam, okay? Okay, that's all. Signing off. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel. Okay, bye-bye. And then don't forget that you can watch this live uh, broadcast again, okay? It will be there in my YouTube channel. Okay, bye-bye.